Hello and welcome to my video, Mythic Spotlight to Sky Woman. The idea for this series came at the request from one of my subscribers, Dragonlove51. In this video, I want to look at the Native American being known as Sky Woman and correlate it to possible meanings and hidden symbolisms. The Sky Woman is mainly a Native American myth about the creation of our world, but with this, her people, not Native Americans, may have come in contact later to some great people in history. I will start by going into the myth, but just keep in mind that the story varies somewhat depending on what American Indian nation is telling the story. First off, the Sky Woman is more of a title and not her actual name. She has various names such as Awenhai, Atensik, Otsisaw, and Lagensi, but later in the story is simply known as Grandmother. The Sky Woman comes from a place in the space known as Sky World. The area is almost like a planet itself with plants, spirit animals, buildings, as well as other sky people known as Karanaki. There is a huge tree, either on Sky World or holding it up, again, depending on who is telling the story, which it would drop food for the people. These sky people are said to have powers of ESP as well as being gifted with Ukiyoctan power. I looked this term up and couldn't find what exactly it included. These powers of ESP are particularly used for attaining dream knowledge. It even goes as far as saying that they are capable of coming to a person via dreams. Due to their powers, Sky Woman was born and quickly matured into a woman. Later on, she married a man only known as the Ancient, and she became pregnant. The Ancient had a dream of a restless, unlit ocean world nearing their home. In this dream, he saw his wife, Sky Woman, falling down onto the ocean world. Later, this is exactly what happened, and it all revolves around a previously mentioned tree being uprooted, and her falling into the open hole. Here, reports vary as to how she fell and how the tree was uprooted, but most agree that both happened. As she fell through the hole towards the ocean world, Earth, some of the spirit animal animals followed her and realizing she will die on impact, safely guided her to the back of a turtle in the sea. With the help of the spirit animals, the water world starts to become the Earth that we know. The Sky Woman gives birth to a daughter who is known as Lynx. As time passed, a man creature came by who was very handsome and had relations with Lynx. She became pregnant with two boys. Earlier stories state quadruplets to represent the four winds or cardinal points of the compass, but it has been compressed to just two. Lynx died during childbirth and her body sprouted much of the plants and vegetables that we have today. The twins were named Flint and Sapling, also called Skyholder. Sapling was the personification of life, creation, day, and summer, while Flint was death, destruction, night, and winter. To roll it up, the boys were what we perceive as life and death. The boys went about creating much of the life on the planet. Sapling created peaceful animals and fruit plants, and Flint made vicious carnivorous animals and briars and brambles. What is sort of funny is in the story, Sapling is said to have created man, and when Flint tried to copy the task, he made monkeys. At one point, the boys had an argument, and it ended with Sapling killing Flint, to which he is said to have become the Rocky Mountains. In the story, Sapling became the peacemaker who created the Iroquois Confederacy. Lynx became the Earth Mother, and Sky Woman became the Moon. Throughout history, many great people have had things come to them in the form of a vision. One such man was George Washington. He reported that at Valley Forge, he once had a female visitor that came to him. He said that he wasn't able to talk to her, but everything was conveyed telepathically. The visitor showed him a dreamlike vision of what the United States would have to overcome and what it would later turn out to be. Later on, George Washington would set the cornerstone for the Capitol building, and the statue of that woman still stands at the top of it. I wanted to add a few ideas as to what possibly could have happened in the Sky Woman story, as well as George Washington's visions. While reading over the myth, I couldn't help but think that this sounds very much like an alien race. 
The part about ESP really intrigued me and led me more to the idea of this being extraterrestrial. The tree puzzled me, but being as how it made it possible to travel between worlds, it might have been looked at as more of a portal. When I read about a possible connection to George Washington, the first thing that came to my mind was, wait a minute, why would a Native American race help a white man in forming the United States for himself? The only reasonable idea I could come up with is that it never stated that the Karyanaki are in fact Native American, even though their culture was set up the same. It is reasonable to think that one of their own people came to give the vision to George Washington. However, in the defense of the Native American people, nowhere in that vision did it state anything about taking any land other than on the East Coast. What I found really interesting about this topic is the fact that there are so many different tribes that have the same similar story, as well as there being artifacts found that represent visitors from space. Just so it's said, these artifacts aren't just assumed to be spacemen, they are actually stated in lore to be exactly that. I would love to hear your comments and opinions on this topic, and also if you would like me to continue this series. But with that, be safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.